Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to the Winter Season Showdowns. We're currently watching a best of five, a best of five between Seed and Snipers. Such an intense match so far. That last game was so much fun. So awesome to see these new strategies in Heart of the Storm. So happy y'all can join us. Of course, if you're watching this live, that's awesome. If you missed the last game and you're like, no, I missed it. I heard it was awesome. Axel Toss is saying it's awesome, but I missed it. Don't worry. It's available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash official MLG SE2. Speaking of which, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the at the page here. Con los terroristas. <laughs> YouTube.com slash official MLG SE2. Go drop a subscription. Let's catch Call of Duty because awesome stuff like that happens when awesome games of StarCraft happen. That being said, are you ready for Game 3? I'm... I'm still a carbon from game two, man. But you I'm know what? Like, I'm out of breath. Let's just two. let's just jump into game game three because game two was, you know, that might be my favorite Heartless Storm game. So, yeah, I think yeah. it's my favorite. Heartless, even, I'm still out of breath. I man. mean, Thor's and Razaki game. We've had a bunch of great games, we but have. that's up there. It's top two for me, without a doubt. Maybe yeah. even my favorite. That was an absolutely amazing game to watch. And that was only game two of this best of five. We might be. I, I for think a real the, treat. This could go to a game five, honestly. It, I, I feel like it will. Whew, these guys are so good. I mean, the, you're, well, you should introduce the players. I'll, I'll talk about Yeah, of course. It. Um, of course, uh, here we are on a newer map. It is... What's this map again? Like Coral online. City. Coral City, yes, yes, yes. Of course, it says that in the bottom right. Axel Toss. What are you doing? But let's introduce the players. The top side of the map, we have the Blue Zerg player who is down 1-0, but said, you know what? Challenge accepted. I'm going to bring out the, Hydra, the, the Hydras. I'm going to bring out the Vipers, and I'm going to see what I can do with about 25 Ultras throughout that last game. He is the Blue Zerg player from Team MVP. He is Sniper. His opponent at the bottom side of the map, it's the Red Protoss player who started up in this series with some awesome Oracle playing game one. Taking game one, but of course, falling in game two. He is Seed from Team Incredible Man. And man, talking about the Ultras play last game, that was really uh, just beautiful to see. I mean, the first engagement was a little bit off, of course, due to positioning. He kind of charged down a ramp into a, a really well-prepared concave out Seed. But uh, in the later games, we saw as long as you get the Ultralis in decent positioning, they can be so effective with the right support. And this is something that, you know, uh, I, I've always wondered why more Zerg players that use Ultralis. And, and the obvious answer is, well, if you just kind of match them at a Protoss, they're all going to die. Yeah. But we saw what happened there with the right amount of support, with the great use of Blinding Cloud, Abducts. Like, if you use the support right, th they can be a really awesome thing to see. And I, I love it that way. I, I like it that where it's like, not everyone can make Ultras work, but if you're as good as Sniper, you use all the parts of your army just right, it, it's just really cool to see. It's the same thing as watching, you know, a Protoss really combine the Force Fields and Storms and, and Time Warps all together to make one beautiful kind of masterpiece of spell devastation. That's like what, what that was like Sniper last game with the Abducts and the Ultralis and, and just a total Zerg Rampage. Now, I know plenty of Zerg players are probably watching and, again, rubbing their hands together. They're, they're discovering these new strategies, these new effective techniques, and that's when you should definitely go try on the ladder. Get those Hydras out. Uh, get those Vipers out and see what you can make happen. Maybe transition into Ultras a little bit later. Now, his upgrades, though, were a little bit intriguing. Of course, he got those a little bit later, so I'm wondering how you incorporate those a little bit earlier to make sure when you transition into those Ultras, you become, you're as powerful as you want to be. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's a tough call. You know, that's something you have, you have to like go back in slow motion over that game and see exactly how his resource spending was allocated throughout that. Um, and that's something you can do as a player when you want to master a strategy, even if you win or lose, you can go back and look and say, you know what, I felt the upgrades were lacking. Let me look through this game and see if there was an opportunity earlier in the game to start making those investments. Or maybe there wasn't, maybe I did it correctly and I should try to stall for more time to catch sure. up on upgrades. Or I, I don't know, but it's, it's something that's it's, it's definitely worth a, a second look at that game to try to figure out exactly how the timings work out. All right, so these guys have spawned cross 
positions here on Core Hall City. It is a four-player map. Uh, some features here, of course, you got your main base and you have a shared natural expansion. Um, so those of you looking to play some 2v2v2v2, I think this could be a solid map for it, though. I'll probably add some expansions in here. Uh, around the map, but uh, but yeah, both these players playing with macro in mind, playing with mid to late game in mind, as we see Sniper already taking that third hatchery at the top right hand location, and of course Seed really prioritizing those probes at this point in time, adding on a sentry here, but nothing too unusual going on. The great thing that for Sniper is that he was able to get that serving inside seed space early, scout yes. exactly what was going on, knows there's no crazy fast oracle this, this time or something, of course. Seed prioritized kicking that Zergling out as soon as possible, and as soon as he did, he added three more gateways. Four more gateways! Oh. This could be some mass warp gate aggression. There's the Mothership Core being Corona boosted out. This is a devastating build. We saw Sasa use just mass warp gates, Mothership Core, time warping the Roaches, and even Zealots can tear the mark. But you know what? Sniper is onto it, man. Look at that Roach Warren in production very early on in the game. A, a very fast lair as well. Exceptionally fast lair going down for uh, for Sniper. It'll be interesting to see how the very fast oh. lair plays out against Gateway Aggression. I feel like he's going to have to sack his third if that's under fire, but uh, with the amount of tech speed he has, I think he'd be okay with that. He saw the Mothership Core, and he might be able to spot a little bit extra here with this Zergling. Um, this is a pretty significant rush distance. Let's take a look at that production tab. If we see drones, we're going to be worried. But if we see nothing but units, I think that um, Sniper definitely has a chance to hold this off. And his Link just got killed at the Watchtower there, so he should have an idea this is coming. But can he get enough units out in time? He's got to spam the build unit button. His other Zergian just got killed. Oh, no, an Overlord! Oh, that's going to supply block him. Oh, you can't, that, that's such a... Oh, that's, that's supply a blocked. I guess he anticipated that. Yes, he. I mean, he now he's 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 bumping up and down Speed supply. More and done. more units are being built. Of course, Seed is not going to go for that third base. In this type of build, you've got to strike straight into core of the Zerg, kill them before their production kicks in. Roach is flanking from the back, but wait a minute, they're going to turn around. If that's a mighty Protoss force. Uh, Sniper is trying to arrange oh, attack from all sides. Fields on the ramp, slowly trying to go up against Zealots. I don't know if there's much Sniper can do here. So many units inside uh, Sniper's main base, and he's just going to throw down the GG. Caught completely off guard there by that Mothership Core attack, uh, supplemented by all of those gateway units. And Sniper is going to fall very fast in game three. A very, very fast defeat there. Uh, I, I'm not. I feel like he pulled the trigger on his engagement a little bit too soon. But I don't know. I mean, there's so many warp gates warping in. Uh, the thing is, you got to pull drones with that too. But even pulling yeah. drones, there's so much Protoss. That's a really tough build to hold, uh, especially if you're trying to attack as fast as he was. He cut so much economy. He started lair, His lair at yeah. the six minute mark. It was done when that. While going was fast three hatches. I mean, so he just had. His, it was almost just a, a misfortune that he decided to try to really. I think he was going for fast mutas, is my guess there. But he was. Uh, that was his original intention until he yeah. scouted and then he had to change. But. He really just, uh, I mean, he, he lost so much. He didn't have the money to get the roaches yeah. uh, from that, that tech. Great play there from Seed. Again, putting down those gateways right when that Ling was killed as well. Getting that Mothership Core out, corner boosting it out. Sending the Mothership Core first to ensure that all of the Lings are cleared out of the way to try to delay your intentions as long as possible. And that's going to convert to victory for Seed in game number three, which means Seed is one win away from getting that qualification spot, getting that all-expenses-paid trip to the Winter Championship event in Dallas, Texas on March 15th. Can he make it happen, or will Sniper come back? We're going to find out. Game four, coming up.